Okay, let's try that again without the phone ringing. What's up, boys and girls? It is I, your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the toxic gatekeeper, the man with the plan, the s get down with the sickness. And we are continuing our 2020 that should have been. The, the future that we were promised that should be happening right now, that isn't. Now, last time we discussed zombie apocalypse as one of the things we were promised that would happen by 2020 that hasn't. Let's look at the next most proli prolific genre of things that we thought were going to happen in 2020 that hasn't, and that is global thermal nuclear war. The fear of global thermal nuclear war and what this weapon could do has existed since the nuclear testings first began in Nevada on Bikini Atoll and the other ones that we don't know of. And Hollywood was quick to respond to this fear. Initially, our reaction was that nuclear weapons would cause giant insects and monsters and things to emerge from the earth. From the giant insect horror genre of America to, of course, kaiju coming out of Japan after World War II. And the idea that what nuclear radiation would do would make normal things huge and go on a rampage. So this was the era of cold science fiction when, and, you know, nobody really knew what nuclear weapons actually were going to do. We just knew there were some mutations and, you know, some weird crap was happening where the bombs went off and there were some signs of, of giganticism and genetic mess up, but really nobody knew. But, 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 but the idea of us suddenly getting attacked by giant radioactive spiders or rabbits or plants or people or lizards, yeah, hasn't happened yet. Probably not going to. Now, as the cold science fiction led, got us into the, well, we have slightly bigger budget and slightly better special effects of the 60s and 70s, we graduated from the promise that in 2020 we would be overrun by giant insects and giant lizards to the post-apocalypse genre that we are most familiar with, and that is like the Damnation Alley Mad Max idea that after the bombs go off, all that's going to be left is this vast desert filled with a few ruins, a small group or even one individual who has maintained some level of humanity, and the rest of humanity, what is there, has degenerated into basically super gangs who wear football helmets and spike football pads. And why there were so many of these movies is because they were incredibly easy to make. I mean, all you had to do was go out in the desert, get a few actors, get a few extras, get an actress with a big boobs who doesn't mind showing her boobs off, you know, get a golf cart and glue some spikes to it, get some football gear from the local whatever, spray paint it black, glue some spikes to that, and you have basically a weekend and a post-apocalypse film. And we have seen some brilliant post-apocalypse films like Mad Max, Blood of Heroes, and some not so brilliant post-apocalypse films like Steel Dawn and Blood of Heroes. Probably the best post-apocalypse film, Turbo Kid, or Mad Max Fury Road. But <clears throat> we this we were promised this vast nuclear wasteland by 220. It hasn't happened. The way things are going in the world, there's still a chance of what happened, but more than likely because the actual nuclear arsenals of the various countries are kind of old. We'd be probably dealing more with dirty bombs and weapons that have progressed past nuclear weapons and smaller yield nuclear weapons and weapons that do different things, biological weapons. Stuff like that. So the the global thumor nuclear war that would destroy all life as we know it, eh, still a small chance, but probably not. Now all these things that the films predicted that would happen, yeah, not gonna happen. You're not gonna have this beautiful desolate nuclear desert with a few guys wandering around wearing chains and spiked football pads because chances are. Anything that survives a nuclear war and then survives the amount of time it would take for 
any semblance of life to be livable again on Earth probably won't be us. Probably be bees or cockroaches or lizards or something else that can survive because humans who somehow managed to survive a nuclear blast. And let's face it, a nuclear blast is awful. Everything that happens after a nuclear blast is awful. And then the radiation kind of sits in and makes the awful even worse. So, yeah, we're talking, you know, a huge chunk of the population just gone. Or gone within days, slowly suffering, you know. We're talking uh, horror movie boils and mutations and burns that never stop burning. And it's just, just, it's just awful. Now, of course, there might be a few who somehow survive in vaults or in outer space or put pressure seals or under the water or whatever, but they're inheriting an Earth that has been decimated by radiation, where nothing lives, nothing grows, nothing can survive. Plus, we've probably got a wind, uh, you know, so much stuff in the air that we can't see the sun. We've got the perivable nuclear winter. So, yeah, the Mad Max future the giant rubber monster future, the giant ant future that was promised to us post-nuclear annihilation, probably never gonna happen. Which is too bad, because I was really looking forward to getting my golf cart, gluing a couple of roofing nails to it, putting some shoulder pads on, spray painting it black, and driving around, you know, chasing people to heavy metal. Yeah. So, 2020, we were promised a nuclear war of decimating proportions, a global thermonuclear war where only a few people would be left to scavenge their way through a beautiful, desolate desert landscape, armed only with their wits and some football gear and some spikes. But that didn't happen. Instead, we got fires in... Australia, whatever it is, is going on with the Mideast, and uh, another season of The Bachelor. So, I don't know which apocalypse is worse. A global thermonuclear war apocalypse, or more of the Cardassians. I'll leave it to you to decide, losers, and we will be back with another episode of our trip through the 2020 that should have been. Talk to you soon.